Do you want to tell me what happened? Matt was drinking. We got into an argument. He tripped over the dog and hurt it. This guy got scared. Is that really it? You know, I have to make a report. What the neighbors heard, the injured dog, the scared kid, and me. You can't go to social services. Here at the end of season one, uh, your character witnesses an event at, on the top of the tower. Two people get off the tower. And your character is far away. We know she didn't have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. But the general assumption is that she did. And But why does she disappear then? She has nothing to hide. I found that really interesting. She does actually... Um witness them, the two people fall off the tower. Um, but I guess nobody knows the circumstances surrounding it or leading up to it. Um, and obviously that's what the, the series then unfolds. I, I guess my character disappears because she's really shot in sh like shock, very traumatized. And even though, you know, she doesn't directly cause them to fall off, she does feel quite responsible. It could have been stopped, um, but it but it, just, it carries on and that's what happens. And it's really tragic. And so I think she runs away because she doesn't know what, quite what to do yet or what to yeah. say. And, you know, speaking of the tower, the tower is right there next mm -hmm. to the police detachment. She's constantly in danger of being triggered by that. And tell me as an actor, how you blended that into the performance. She's definitely triggered um, and she's, the thing is, from the end of the first series to the beginning of this series, the time jump is only six weeks, really, really short. And so I think I had to, as an actor, I had to keep on reminding myself that she witnessed this really tragic, traumatic um, event six weeks ago. That's still very fresh. And so she's still dealing with that. She's mourning her, her partner, Hadley. Yeah. But she's got a job to do. and She's happy to be back at work and unfortunate for her to have to look at it. Um, Lizzie's a very good, very capable uh, officer. Um, we see her acting with the victims and with, with perps, and she's incredibly empathetic with the victims, and she's tough with the perps. And I love to see that, you know, she's not taking anything from them. You know, we see her in, in a completely different way this season. This is also, as an actor, this is my first ever time coming back to a series. I've never done a second series of anything I've ever done. And so even for me, it was a challenge to, to you know, not get complacent, um, keep things fresh, you know, remember all of the backstory that I had come up with for her and worked with the writers on the first series. And not to forget that just because we're dealing with a different storyline, his character is still the same person and has still dealt with all of those things that we've seen in season one. So it was, it was always like, okay, I've got to now take all of that with me and now take on this new storyline. And I think for me, again, it, like, as an actor and, and kind of blending this with Lizzie, she's suffered a major loss. And when you go through something like that, or you, you know, you, you're grieving or you suffer from grief, it never leaves you. Like it never leaves you, you are changed forever. And I think that's what I wanted to bring into this Lizzie. I was quite excited to bring that side of her into this series and I, I, hopefully I did it. Um, oh yes, you showed us, you showed us. And thank goodness that she can be a bit hardened because to carry that raw all the time would just be awful. She also, you know, it was, it was important for me also that she, yes, she's hardened, but she's still the same Lizzie, who, who exactly, who's empathetic, who cares about the victims or the people that she's um, being called to help. And she'll still put others before herself and her own safety. Uh, you mentioned uh, building a backstory for her before shooting season one. As an actor, how much actual homework goes into to a role? There, there's a lot. I mean, before you even step foot on set, you as an actor, probably have to have done about 80% of the work already. You have to be on, you have to step onto set prepared, right? So you get this, you know, well, this is what I do. This is my personal process. I get the script. 
I read all of the things that are in the script, all the things that are fact. And then I just write an entire backstory for my character. So, you know, what day of the month, you know, was she born? What star sign is she? What kind of music does she like? Does she like? food, her parents, her upbringing, her friends, what does she like to do in her spare time? And although none of this may even come onto the screen, it still informs my choices as an actor and just grounds the character in reality rather than just being scribblings on a page. Um, wow. I know that, that works for me. I always also make a playlist as well because music is important. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it just kind of if you're on set or you're ever like, oh crap, what oh, I need to kind of, you know, you, you sometimes you, you don't have time. You've got to get to set. You might have things happening in your own personal life. You've got to get to set and you've got to get into character. And it's such an easy way for me to just like put in my, my AirPods, listen to a playlist, and it just brings me right back to that character. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. The only time I've ever heard that before was Daniel Day Lewis listening to Eminem for Gangs New York. Oh my- you know, without giving anything away, can you tell us a little bit about this season? This season, still, that is a still um, a kind of underlining storyline still, but my character's dealing with a domestic abuse um, case. Yeah. Gemma's character's dealing with um, like a historical missing person, missing girl from 1997. Emmett's character's also obviously you know, aiding with, 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 with my case. Um, and then we all, so we all have these separate storylines, but then all, they're all, we all then together. I'm really enjoying the tower. I'm really, really Um, loving it. And I, it's the character development, you know, that's, I think what does it. Britain seems to do the murder mysteries better than anyone else in the world. So <laughs> we're not afraid of like grit. I think that's what yeah. we're, not, we're not. We're not afraid of grit and, and kind of telling ugly truths and, and portraying them on screen in hopefully a really authentic way. Thank you so much. Just lovely to speak to you too. Oh, you too. You too. Thank All you. right. See you for next season. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Matt loves Sky. He'd never hurt her. And Marley just showed up to support you in what? Keeping quiet. Don't do this. Sky loves her dad. I'm sure she does. But here's the thing, Georgina. How long will you stay quiet? Until you're covering Sky's bruises with makeup too. (laughs) 